Well, I pulled the speaker out of the uh, <clears throat> the radio uh, cabinet for the um, Indian Head Radio, apparently. Indian Head Radio. There's a number on the cone itself. Looks like uh, 6-K. It's hard to tell. Yeah, 6-K. Looks like if we put it up this way. Six dash K. There are several holes in this where that uh, cord came through. Is uh, I believe this one on this side over here. I could be wrong. There's one of them that's multiple. It goes off in different directions. I kind of pushed them back together a little bit, and then there's some pinholes in here too. There are some. Oh. Guess watch your camera, huh? Watch your camera. See what you're doing. Watch what you're doing. Okay. There's uh this one right here is where the cord came through. That's where the cord was pushed through. This one I don't know how it happened. It was like that. There's a nice crack that goes. I kind of pushed it back together, but it goes. I guess we use the the brush. Um it kind of goes the whole it goes all the way. And then makes a turn and ends like right in here. And then there's some pinholes as well. And then you've seen this one right over here. It's like three pieces. And I think there's another cut. Um, there's another one I found. Where is it? That's right here. It's hard to tell, but there's a cut right there too. So there's two major holes in it with a small cut and one, two, three, three pretty good, three, four pinholes in it, it looks like. So you can see these holes pretty plain. There's another one right here, and there's a smaller one. I just seen a smaller one. There's a smaller one here somewhere else. It's hard to tell. But those are the major parts with this. Now I've done a experiment the cone moves pretty easy no binding or anything so I think it's I think that that speaker is going to be okay if I can repair those cracks in it and I've done <clears throat> an experiment I've seen a couple of different methods for repairing for repairing um, speakers some people use paper towel some people use tissue some people use coffee filter. I have coffee filters that I don't use. I got a coffee maker that has a metal screen in, screen in it now. And I've used and I've tried that and I've mixed Elmer's with some water here. And I painted it on here in a spot and I want to see if it's going to shrink or distort that paper in any way. I've seen a couple of guys use this black electrical, um, liquid electrical tape. It seems to be, might, might not be a bad way to go. We'll see how hard it gets and if it distorts the, the coffee filter any. Shrinkage is what I'm worried about. Shrinkage because it'll deform the cone, which could cause it to bind. And I don't want it to bind on that, um, where it slips up and down in the middle of that voice coil area there. Um... We'll let this dry, I guess, for a while, and then we'll come back and check to see how they look. I'm going with this because I've, I'm leaning towards this because I've seen a lot of repairs done with this, this mixture of water and, and Elmer's white glue. <clears throat> this is, I've seen a few repairs with this, and it seems to work pretty good. You don't need to use coffee filter when you use this. Apparently you can just brush over the the cracks in the holes and it'll just bind on it. The other way is with the hot glue gun, but there's from what I've read the hot glue gun it makes the cone a little bit heavy and that's what I was kind of worried about this making the cone heavy. Um because if the cone's not the right weight then the sound won't be right because the cone can't move as easy as it used to. 
but with as many repairs that need to be done to that cone the um, hot glue gun method might not be a good way to go so we'll come back to this and check it and then we'll uh, move on to the speaker see how that goes I, I just want to do the best repair as I can this is an old radio and I think uh, reconing that is probably not an option for me to recone it and I just don't want to spend the money to send it off to have somebody else recone it. it just doesn't make sense to me and I've done everything else myself so I'll, I'll do this myself too hopefully I'm, I, I kind of like this if it was a black I really don't want to use put material on there I would like to just put this on there and call it good maybe I have to do this in a couple of um, maybe a couple of layers of this right we'll see we'll come back check this out when it dries well it's a little over 24 hours and everything's dried up real nice the uh, liquid electrical tape did not distort at all and it kind of mimicked kind of mimic the I don't know how to explain it but it just kind of like a nice coating over the top of it it didn't really affect too much you know how flexible so this stuff's pretty pliable and it didn't deform the paper at all the Elmer's glue mixed with the water it distorted the paper and it changed it's stiff the paper is stiff now. It's not flexible. It's pretty stiff. So I'm kind of liking the electric, uh, the liquid electrical tape. Kind of liking this stuff for this. I, I'm going to try it. I think on this speaker because some of the cracks are up into the part where it needs to flex. The cracks are up here um, where it needs to flex, right? That's what these folds are about. This is where the speaker is going to move up and down. This is your uh, joint, I guess is a way to say it. I'm, I'm not sure, but if that's a good way. This is going to be pretty stiff. This isn't going to move. From here to here is not going to move very much. It's going to move this is gonna flex out here this is gonna move as one piece this is all gonna move as one piece right here these are gonna on the same plane I guess is a better way to explain it there might be ripples in here a little bit but not as much as there's gonna be movement here because if you watch the speaker when it when it's working this and this are moving at the same pretty much this is not this is as this joint here is your flex okay so I think it needs to be flexible I guess that's the short end of it I don't need a long explanation of that and there's another one here right another one that's in the another one here that's in the flex where it's gonna flex so I think this is probably gonna be the best way to fix this plus there's all those little holes there's a bunch of little holes in in it I don't know if you can see and there's a bunch of little holes in there there's a bunch of little holes it's like four or five of them so I'm gonna paint this with the uh, liquid electrical tape I think just the areas I'm just gonna try and get the areas where the where the um, tears are I'm not gonna try and lather the whole thing hopefully it's thick enough it can bridge the gap where these holes are where these little tiny holes are we'll do it and take a look Well, here's the speaker I slobbered on. You have to work fast with this stuff. It dries really quick. So do one little spot, stop, put the lid back on, or the can will start drying out on you. But it's it, it works pretty good. It dries real quick, and it makes a good solid repair. See how it flexes? I think it's going to be okay. The grill cloth was a little bit loose inside of the radio, so I pulled it out and um, put some spray adhesive on it. I hope I got it right. I probably screwed this up. 
I did not see the the sun pattern in it when I did it. So this is probably not going to line up with what's going on in the radio now. But I guess that's the way it is. You can kind of see there's a hole there now. Never seen that before. So there's kind of a hole there. I didn't notice that. I mean, if I have to, I can get a new piece of cloth eventually and and uh, redo it. I, I'm, I'm not too happy about this cloth either. You know, it kind of just like a piece of burlap bag. I mean, it's not real nice at all. So maybe I'll get a different piece eventually and cut a new piece of cardboard for the back of it. <clears throat> This didn't look like it'd be real hard to make. You know, you just got to get the right thickness of material to make it out of. Um, yeah, I guess we'll uh, I'll trim this up a little bit. You know, I'll put it in there, see how it looks, and then I'll trim it so it doesn't end up in the dial. Because this, I think this is where the dial goes, is right here. So, and then we'll uh, put this back in there, and then, well, maybe we'll plug this into the radio and see how it sounds. I think I'm to that point now. So, all right. Until next time. Well, I slipped the uh, grill cloth back in. I trimmed it up. Take a look at the back side here. I trimmed it up some so it clears the dial here real nice. It won't be in the dial face anymore like it was when I got the radio. <clears throat> the grill cloth looks okay. Um, you can't see those lines like I thought you would be able to. You know those sun faded lines, I don't see them. At least I'm not seeing them right now in this under this bright light. Maybe in natural sunlight or something you'd be able to see them, I don't know. But it looks okay. Um, I guess the next thing to do is to work on the radio a little bit more. I guess it needs an alignment. You know, put the tubes back in and power it up. Do an alignment on it or check it anyway. See where the um, the internal, free, you know, the IF where the IF is at, if it's 456 like it's supposed to be, I can't remember. I think it is 456 on this one. Um, all right, till we get going again. Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look great, but it's not going to the Roadster show. <laughs>